You know, it started with the boot camps, of course, but it evolved into, okay, like I'm working out hard. I'm spending, you know, a significant amount of time now in the gym and <laughs> I want to make sure that my eating habits reflect that. Yeah. So then, because, you know, I don't want to work that as hard as I was working and then go home and eat. Back to pizza. Eat back to pizza, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, so my eating habits change. So all of a sudden now I'm working out, I'm eating healthier. I'm like, okay, like I'm going to go shopping and wear something other than sweats. Like yeah, I'm going to yeah. see, I'm going to go pick out some awesome clothes. Like, and I yeah. hated shopping. Yeah. And so then I started picking out, you know, nice clothes. And then I started going out more. I started interacting yeah. more. My social life, you know, got better because I felt good about myself. Hey, it's Ian Weinberg from Ian Fitness, and this is the Inside Look episode number, big number 10, and so excited to have Mari on the show today. She is a legend uh, boot camper, and man, I, I want you, I would love for you to start off with just kind of sharing, because we got a couple parts of your story to share, yeah. um, but to start off with how you initially got started at West Seattle in the boot camp, and um, just walk us through kind of how, how you found out about us and kind of what your initial experience was and, and why you were interested in coming in. Yeah, so I moved to West Seattle from Boston, Boston Transplant, and I moved there, I want to say about almost four years ago now. Um, and Time flies. I, yeah, and I kept driving by the Ian Fitness location yeah, there, yeah. right on California Ave. So I drive there like on my way to Tallarico's to get some pizza um, every day back and forth. Um, and I kept, you know, it was like in this garage space and I always, I thought that was cool. I was like, you know, this location looks cool. Um, wasn't quite ready the first few drive-bys to yeah. walk in. Um, it took... Well, you're hungry. You're heading I was for hungry, pizza. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it took, it took a little bit for me to actually be to that point where I'm like, okay, I'm ready to walk in there. Um, and I did. And first person I meet is Jill, the studio manager there. And she's like, all right, yeah, yeah, let's get you signed. Hold on, I'm a quick comment. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of people that never get to that point that they actually walk in, mm -hmm. but they see it, whether mm -hmm. they're on their way to pizza or Thai food <laughs> or Mexican food or whatever it might be. So what, like, what happened? What was, what was the driving force to get you in through the door? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's this place I'm sure everyone's heard of called Rock Bottom. Um, <laughs> so like I was kind of underneath that. <laughs> um, and I just got to the point where I was so unhappy um, in my skin. Um, every morning, every evening, I had an awful relationship with food to the point where I didn't even enjoy that pizza that mm. I was going to get. Um, and it took, once again, it took... It took weeks, it took nearly months of feeling that way, of being to that point. It wasn't like I hit rock bottom, I was like, all right, I gotta make some changes. Yeah. Like I made a home there <laughs> for a little bit and I got comfortable there and the idea of branching out and stepping outside of it was really overwhelming and yeah. scary and it took me a long time to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to be at that place, but sometimes, um, it's actually like getting that far down is better than being like kind of bad. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. if you're just kind of bad, like we say it all yes. the time, you know, um, good enough is the enemy of greatness. And yeah. it's just in the same token, like bad is like super bad, but awful is actually a good thing. Once it gets to awful, then you're motivated to make some changes. Exactly. So, um, it, it can actually be, you know, there's a, there's another coin, there's another side of that coin yeah. when you feel like you're at rock bottom because that's what's gonna make you walk into a place that exactly. might just change your life. So okay, so you walk in, you see yes. Jill. I see Jill. Yeah, human form of energy. Oh my god, yeah. energizer bunny, <laughs> yeah. big smile on my face, on her well, her yeah. face, which yeah. you know reflected on my face, because yeah. I'm like, oh, she looks happy to see me. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, got me in for the seven uh, seven day trial, okay. actually. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I did that. Uh, I did that first boot camp, and there were probably about 40 other people in that boot camp <laughs> with me. And I was once again very overwhelmed. I hadn't worked out in years, or yeah. I mean, I haven't. I never worked out like that my whole life. Sure. But like any kind of activity, really beyond. 
<laughs> I don't even know beyond walking yeah. to work. Like I, yeah. you know, I hadn't done in so long. Um, and so it seemed really intimidating. Jill told me to take it at my own pace. Uh, she actually paired me up with a longtime boot camper who still nice. goes there, recently got their 500 shirt. Nice. Um, great guy. And uh, he was really supportive of me the entire class. I modified a lot. Yeah. Um, might have shed a tear <laughs> a little bit. Uh, mountain climbers might have killed me <laughs> at that point. But uh, that's, yeah, it, it, was, it was one boot camp. And uh, now, four years later, yeah, just here. Yeah. So that first session, like it was, mm -hmm. it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was challenging. Yes. It pushed you past what you've been capable of doing because you weren't even really doing anything like that before. Yeah. So, what was it that was allowed it to be so challenging? Yet you were like, "Hey, I want more of this challenge." Yeah. Why did you keep coming back? If it was, if it um, was that kind of that. I'm experience. not gonna yeah. lie. The day after, I was like, "No." <laughs> like couldn't move yeah. the stairs were scary everything hurt and I'm like I don't know if I can do that and this was with me modifying as well and I was like I, I don't know if I can do this you know my body had been out of activity for yeah. so long um, but I also felt great after like it's it's weird like I felt my body was like but physically, 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 you were hurting physically I was yeah. hurting but I but I also felt like I accomplished something like it was 45 minutes, but it was more than I had accomplished in the past three years. Mm. And that felt good. And I wanted to, as someone who was in a really dark place, I didn't yeah. really feel good often mm -hmm. um, about the choices I, I was making, the health choices I was making, I finally felt good and I wanted yeah. to feel more of that. Yeah, that's awesome. So what, did you make it back during that initial week? I did, I did. Okay. I probably <laughs> made it in... I want to say like three times okay, that yeah. first week. That's great. Yep. Yeah, that's and great. then uh, sat down, talked with Jill. She made it really clear that like this was the way to go. And I was yeah. and she, right, right. Yeah. I remember yeah. she's like, she, she's like, right, this is, this makes sense, right? Yeah. And I was like, it does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Your body was saying no, but yeah. Like, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, no, actually this, <laughs> this does make sense. Yeah. And yeah. That's nice. I love it. So, so you were going and I mean, how far... How far along had you had how many in terms of like training sessions? I don't know exact many, but like months in or years in, and like what kind of results were you feeling? Because you were at a, from your your words, rock bottom. Yeah. And like where did you feel like you got up to in terms of where you were like physical changes? Yeah. So I had started probably my first few months um, of boot camp about three times a week, and that was what was recommended. Yeah. And I felt like that was something I could fit into my life without. Uh, having to come up with the excuse of like, oh, I don't have time for that. Like that was something that was manageable for me at the time. Yeah. Or as I now know, it was a smart goal. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I did that for a few months and I kept feeling better and I kept getting a little bit stronger. I kept, you know, picking up just slightly heavy weights yeah. or, or going, you know, cardio, going a little bit harder, a little yeah. higher intensity. And uh, when I got to the point where I, I was doing three classes a week and I felt like that was not only manageable, but I was crushing it. Yeah. I upped it to four times a week. Nice. And then I upped it to five times a week. And then I was one of those crazy people who uh, started doubling up. Sometimes I, if I wanted a real extra challenge, I would you know, go to different studios as well and sometimes hit three a day. I got a little crazy, um, but it was awesome. <laughs> so, okay, so there's Mari who's at, at rock bottom. <laughs> Who just hasn't worked out in three or four years, yep. and then all of a sudden you're coming in a couple times a day, yep. four or five times a week. Yep. Like, what happened in between that gap? Yeah. Like, what, what was the transformation? Because there's a physical transformation. Of course, well, of course. But like, which is a huge motivator. Yeah. Like, not gonna lie. Like that was like seeing actually seeing the physical results was a huge motivator to keep this going. Mm. But it was even more than that. It was once again like I was happy. Like I was waking up happy i felt good in my skin in my clothes in like my interact even my interactions with others like i felt more positive like i felt i was i had a different perspective like and that i i wanted i really wanted more of that like yeah. i just i wanted to keep this great feeling this high he, he doesn't want to feel good like yeah, yeah, yeah. and i wanted to yeah. feel good all the time and that yeah. was and you know it started with the boot camps of course, but it evolved into, okay, like I'm 
working out hard. I'm spending, you know, a significant amount of time now in the gym and <laughs> I want to make sure that my eating habits reflect that. Yeah. So then, because, you know, I don't want to work that as hard as I was working and then go home and eat. Back to pizza. Eat back to pizza, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so my eating habits change. So all of a sudden now I'm working out, I'm eating healthier. I'm like, okay, like I'm going to go shopping and wear something other than sweats. Like yeah, I'm going to yeah. see, I'm going to go pick out some awesome clothes. Like, and I yeah. hated shopping. Yeah. And so then I started picking out, you know, nice clothes. And then I started going out more. I started interacting yeah. more. My social life, you know, got better because I felt good about myself. And mm. I felt good about myself in a public setting where before I feel like I would have tried to shy away from that because sure. I was so uncomfortable. So you had, you had more confidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My confidence, myself, like everything. And like it started with that boot camp, but it evolved into so much more than just exercise. So where did the, you know, where did, for you personally, like where did that confidence come from to jump into a setting that you've never been before that was, you know, challenging to do and feel a little bit like a fish out of water? Yeah. And then like just keep it going. Like where, is that something you've always had like that internal confidence or did, did that no, develop during no, the process? No, no, it was, it was definitely a process. Um, at first, of course, that initial motivator was just that rock bottom. Yeah. After that, it was my boot campers and my coaches. Having their support and having them believe that I could finish these boot camps and I could finish these stations, even at times where I really didn't think I could, that kept me going. Yeah. And it, so I, somebody believing in you, uh, believing that you can do a little bit more than you can do yourself. Exactly, and I relied on that for a while, yeah. for a long time, a um, few months at least. And then it started to, it got to a point where it started to shift a little bit to uh, that external kind of support and, and confidence and that people had in me and belief that people had in me to like that was more coming from me now. Like yeah. it was like I can do this. It was this. an identity shift. Exactly. It was like I can do this. Like I know I can do this. Yeah. Absolutely I can do, I yeah. can do anything for 30 seconds. Yeah. Just said so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and now I'm saying so. Yeah, yeah. Like it was. Yeah. It was a shift. Yeah, that's really cool because it's I mean that's that's really the way it goes is to start with you, you have to, or it's very helpful to have these external pieces, whether it's, you know, the support of other boot campers or a coach or somebody giving you that bit of belief and, and helping you see that identity that you want to see in yourself that's out there, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, hey, I might not be there yet, but like, that's where I want to get to. And then you get to a point where it's like, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes internalized. Like, that's your new identity. That's your new, you know, your new belief system. And then it really skyrockets, yeah. right? And then talk about like the next piece for you after that. Oh boy, yeah. So yeah. I reached my goal, I, like a specific goal weight, which a lot of people do, whether it's um, a sp specific weight on you know the scale or how their clothes fit or yeah. size or just general confidence. Like everyone has these goals, right? And so I had a specific weight goal for me, and I, I reached that eight months. Took me eight yeah. months start to go or, or start to finish, and uh, I reached it, and then. It was almost I wouldn't I wouldn't call it necessarily another identity crisis, but it was almost like now what? Because yeah. I had spent my whole life yo-yoing back and forth. Like I had spent my whole life either gaining and feeling awful, or you know these bursts of of times in my life where like I felt motivated, I got things done, I got healthy again, I lost weight, yeah. and then I got to that point like. You know, in the past few years, it got to that point, it got to my goal weight, and I was like, "Now what?" Mm -hmm. Like, and it was weird. Like, I, like, I was now expected to live in this maintenance mm -hmm. life that I, I, that was almost as scary yeah, as yeah, starting yeah. to me. I'm it like, okay, yeah. it was a new thing, and I'm like, now what's my goal? Yeah. And so, what was the, what was your weight loss goal? How much? How yeah. Much so I started goal? at about 180, uh, maybe a little bit heavier. Might be being modest. Um, and uh, I ended at 140. Wow. So it's 40 awesome. pounds in eight months. Wow, that's great. Um, and that was all, that was boot camp and, and healthy. Do you remember how many how many pounds, you, so 40 mm -hmm. plus pounds you lost. Do, mm -hmm. you remember, do you remember how many you lost in the first week? Oh, yeah, a hand, oh, <laughs> enough to keep me going. Um, I would probably say about four or five. Wow, so yeah. right away. Right, right away, because I had, like, when I started boot camp, 
I also started eating healthy. I was gotcha. like, I'm not gonna work gonna out, yeah. and I'm not like to, to all those, eat. Yeah, no, exactly. Like I'm gonna make them count. Yeah. So even just not going from like we keep joking about it, but seriously, even not going from eating pizza every day at lunch, and all of a sudden shifting that out for a healthier yeah. option and working out those few days a week that first week. I mean, yeah. it just yeah, you're gonna see a difference. Yeah. So during those eight months, forty pounds. Mm -hmm. There had to have been at least one week or a two week period or a month that you didn't see the scale change. Three. Three weeks. Three weeks, there's no Three changes. weeks. I remember, I, I will never <laughs> forget it. Remember. Oh Where yeah, it? it was in January. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else is losing weight yes. because of their New Year's resolutions. Yes. Okay, so what do we what's the takeaway here when there's when you're on this long we get to look back mm -hmm. with twenty twenty, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, hey, who cares about a three week period yeah. over eight months yeah. and forty pounds? But when you're in the middle of that Oh like my it gosh. feels like an, an ocean on boulders on yes. both sides. So like how did you navigate that when you were when you were in that? Yeah, state? so I had been steadily after my first month, which I dropped it yeah. a lot, which yeah. typically typically happens yeah. when you all of a sudden change sure. your activity yeah. and eating lifestyle. Um, after that I was steadily losing about four to five pounds a month. Okay. Um, sure. and so I remember that month was January where I plateaued, where I didn't yeah. see any changes. And I had been, I mean, I was coming to boot camp six times a week. I was eating as healthy, I was tracking, I was yeah. eating as healthy as I could. Um, I was about 153 mm -hmm. at the time. And I, my, you know, my end goal was 140, but like I was waiting for the end of the month. I was like, I want to get to that 150. Yeah. And I mean, three weeks of, of eating healthy, of working out almost every day, and nothing yeah. was moving and it was so frustrating and I remember like I and it was hard because you're right like in the span of like eight months or a year it was nothing but at the time I was so discouraged yeah. like I'm like what else do I need to do yeah. like um, and I, I wound up talking to Joe uh, the manager at West Seattle and I, I spoke to her about this and I was like I don't know can you give me some advice like yeah. what else can I be yeah. doing and she was like nothing she was like you're you're doing what you can she was like your body's changing mm -hmm. um and you're not going to see a difference every single day on the scale but how do you feel tell me how you feel right now like and we started talking about how i feel okay okay so that, that sounds pretty good sounds like you're really happy you're really comfortable clothes yeah. are still fitting awesome and i was like yeah 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 that yes yeah. yeah, so but like the number like right. and i was just i i was so and you know it happens mm -hmm. like that where you get so caught up in the and and it was really hard but the consensus basically at the end of the conversation it's like okay so what are you going to do you're going to stop right. like because you're not re like like what are what are your options here yeah. you either stop and you give up and you're like you know what i tried like you know i gave it my best or you you keep doing this yeah. and you trust, you trust the process, the process. Yeah. Yeah. exactly and uh, i did and after those three weeks, it was like within kind of the span of a week, I, it was like four, like four pounds all of a sudden yeah. it just dropped and yeah. I hit that 149. I had not seen the 140s yeah, yeah. in uh, my I adult could. life probably. Wow. And it was just so satisfying and I was yeah. so happy and I trusted the process even though that is so much easier said than done because yeah. I, I, I lived that. And, and clients come up to me all the time. I mean, as recently as two days ago, I had a client come up to me and she was like, I've been doing, the, like, I've been at it for two weeks, like coming to boot camp, like really pushing myself. I'm eating, I'm following the meal plans. Like, and she was like, I'm not, I'm not seeing that. It was like, try eight I, months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, and st sometimes I tell clients, I'm like, give me six months, yeah. give me a year, give me a year, like yeah. give me that time to change your life. Yeah. And that's when I, started thinking about my next goal, which was like, this is awesome. I feel awesome. I know that this works and I want to show and help other people yeah. that this works. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I love it. There's so many great takeaways there from, you know, trusting that process and, and feeling stuck. And you do have two options. It's like, hey, you can convince yourself because mm -hmm. uh, there's always that, that uh, conversation in our head of like, hey, I, maybe I can't do this. Maybe this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm the one person that it doesn't work for. And you can listen to that or you can kind of shut it out and say, okay, I'm going to trust the process and I'm going to stick with it. Um, I didn't put on all this weight or mm -hmm. I didn't get to this specific fitness level overnight mm -hmm. or in three weeks. It's going to mm -hmm. take a while for it to come back. And then, of course, all the off the scale things that we get to yeah. point out, right? When yeah. you're feeling better, you've got more energy, like, holy crap, you're working out six times and a week. And my sleep you know, was better, yeah. like everything. Sure, my skin awesome. was better. Like yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. So 
you go through this transformation and then, and this is what's really cool is it's like, what I've really found is once you've got there, it's almost like you, you have this new gift, right? Like you have this new, you know, this new body, this new mindset, this new identity, and then the next level is to then give it back, mm -hmm. right? It's then to kind of pay it forward. And it's like, I've gone through this process and now you can help guide other people. And I imagine that was kind of that conversation. Yeah, right? yeah. oh, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about kind of how that transition looked like into, into then, you know, from being in the boot camps to then leading the boot camps. Well, it really was like, I, I got to a point, another kind of shift um, where I was like, okay, like I, I'm not gonna lie, when I first walked in as a boot camper that trial, like I saw all those pictures on the wall and I was like, these aren't real. Um, these like before <laughs> and after pictures, cause yeah. you see that on like commercials sure. and other things. Like I was just like, this isn't, um, you know, so on, so on. But like, like once- somebody's I, really good at Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but once I got to that point, I was like, no, like this works. Yeah. Like this works, like I know it works. I, I lived through it and it was, hard and it was wonderful and it was terrifying and it had its ups and downs and there were some weeks where I was so motivated I felt like I was like on top of the world and other weeks in that eight month period where I wanted to give up yeah and, and I and I imagine uh, there's probably still moments in oh yeah where you feel very oh yeah <laughs> wonder, right? just yeah. like just like anybody and I, that's also a super important part of that whether you're just starting in that fitness journey or yeah. whether, you know, even myself, there's days that I don't feel like it yeah. and I don't feel motivated, but the difference is you do it anyway. Yeah, right? you do it anyways. And that was probably as a boot camper who has now transitioned into a coach and personal trainer, that was like mind blowing to me to learn that, that one of my biggest takeaways was that motivation is great. Like it really, I mean, that's what got me in the door, yeah. right? Motivation is great. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the discipline. Mm -hmm. It's coming It's it's coming in the days where that motivation is gone. Yeah. When you especially don't want to come in, when you are exhausted, when life is really busy and hectic and yeah. you just don't have the time for it. Like those were the most important days to get it 100%. in. Those are the days you get results. Yeah. And you don't want to be there. Like, like everybody's motivated and everybody feels yeah. good. Like it's yeah. easy to oh, work Oh, classes out, right? would be packed. What? Like yeah, totally. all of Seattle yeah. would be in classes right. all the time. Like and the days, you know, like recently there, when it was snowy and oh, icy, yeah. you know, there's a few people that I'm sure we can both think about. Yeah. That's like, it doesn't matter what's happening outside. They're going to be there. Yeah. And then their workouts and their fitness level reflect yep. the fact that they show up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. There. I love that. Um, this is, this has been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love and, your story. It's great. So tell me a little bit now yeah. when you're, you know, the, the kind of perspective that you're able to share with clients and you kind of alluded to that earlier that folks that whether they're struggling a little bit or whether they're seeing some success, but having been on the other side and not just been there, but had a significant transformation. Yeah. What is that like now coaching? So it's interesting. Um, a lot of clients that I've come across both boot campers and, um, clients in PT, they almost come in with the expectation or the presumption that like, I've always been fit mm -hmm. or that all the coaches and trainers that work at EM Fitness have always been fit. Yeah. Like they grew it, like they have the genes for it. Like that is just, that is what they've spent their we're life both, doing. We're born yeah, we're born curls, doing so bicep like, curls, yeah. just come out of the womb that yeah. way. Um, so, and, and even yesterday, you know, I actually, I have one of my, my before and after my transformation picture on uh, the wall in some of the studios and- It'll be right here. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yesterday, um, I had a client who hadn't noticed it before, and I usually don't go out of my way sure. to point it out, but she was working out doing kettlebell swings, and she's like, Mari, is that you? And I was like, yeah, that's me. And then we, we spoke. Like both of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we uh, not photoshopped, and uh, we spoke after class, and she was like, wow. She was like, it's really nice, for a back, lack of better words, um, to see that you're coming from a point where I feel like I'm I'm at now yeah. because once again if you, you come in with the assumption that everyone's just like yeah. fit and, and and born this way and the genes are like it it, it makes it feel like Nobody it's a lot more relatable the yeah, process totally. yeah. like and it's a lot easier for me I feel like as um, a coach to connect with clients because of my own experiences because it's like hey I get it like you you sound really frustrated right now with the process 
I was too. Yeah. Like in it, like I'm not gonna like it. Sucks. Mm -hmm. Like it does, and it does sometimes, and it's not always going to be awesome and rainbows totally. and yeah. like it's sometimes it's gonna be a really grueling process mm -hmm. and it's gonna be really hard to make it in some days and it's gonna be really hard some days not to let that old uh, even now that that old negative self talk yeah. kind of try to bring bring you back um, but I mean we're we're stronger than that yeah. we are and I feel like that's one of the other things that the other goals that you don't see on the scale that you get that confidence and that ability to be like, I'm stronger than that. Yeah, yeah. you build your resiliency, yeah. right? I talk about yeah. building your resiliency muscles, just like we build build our muscles physically. Once you go through a transformation or even just starting, yeah. it's a challenging thing to do because for every person that's starting, there's 10 other ones that haven't built that courage up yet to begin. And so once you begin, you might have to begin again, yeah. and then you might have to start again another yeah. time and another time, but just always knowing that the less you quit, the less you need to start over, mm -hmm. right? Because the journey is not going to stop. You nope. kind of have to keep going. Um, but getting, you do develop that mental strength. And I talk about, you know, both the resiliency muscles, but also how you do anything is how you do everything. So once you start recognizing like, hey, I'm strong in the gym, mm -hmm. I'm getting stronger, then you get stronger when mm -hmm. it comes to making decisions, mm -hmm. when it comes to doing other things, kind of that snowball effect. Last thing I want to ask about, you mentioned was the challenge of kind of once you reach your goal, it, historically in the past you've mentioned, then you'd kind of slip back down. Yeah. And what's kept you at a place that you've been able to, you know, stay fulfilled at? Yeah. So honestly, so this, what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. um, being a coach and working with clients, like this is my new goal that has kept me in this maintenance yeah. phase yeah. overall because like you're just demoing exercise. exactly because I'm, yeah. I'm working on no but like because I want to be that example yeah. I want to show people like I, the worst thing I could do like I don't want to be that that bad example right. like this is what you don't do <laughs> like, like I want to be that good example of like yes you can see these changes yes you can make this transformation and you can keep it yeah. and 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 that's possible you don't have I'm, I mean I mean, there are millions of us that yo-yo our entire lives yeah. that don't know how to just live our lives, our 80, year, 80 to 100 years, just yeah. healthy all the time. That's not saying, of course, we're not going to have days, you know, that where we, <laughs> we, where we do have that. <laughs> I, think, I think that is part of health, though. Like, like, exactly, right? exactly. That, yeah. um, but it, it was just really important to me that I become that example and I, I live that example and having that responsibility and having and making that my goal has helped me yeah. in this kind of maintenance phase like this is life this yeah. is not when you say it all the time like this is not a sprint right. like this is mar uh, this is a marathon yeah. this is what I want to do this is how I want to live my life I want to be healthy mm -hmm. and I want to be happy yeah. and that is what I want my life to look like and that's what I think everyone yeah. So if you want to be healthy and happy, you should follow Mari's example. Um, so it, I think it's probably pretty safe to say, um, you know, driving by that EM Fitness and then getting yourself in there really kind of yeah. changed the trajectory of your life. It did. Right? It did. Yeah, yeah that's wow. awesome. Well, here it, now. Yes, <laughs> in this, here in you this are chair. Now. Yeah, totally. Four um, years later. I know, it's awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming out. I think there's a lot of wonderful things for everybody watching and listening to take home and to implement into their journey um, to get them to the next level. And if you are in the uh, uh, North Seattle area in Shoreline, you can come see Mari and uh, she will certainly inspire you to greatness yourself. So thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you so much for being thank on. You. And we'll see you again. Make sure you subscribe down below. Check out some of the, our previous episodes and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.